All right, well, we welcome you back uh, as we uh, spend a few moments diving into God's Word. We just encourage you to follow along uh, this evening. We're going to be in John chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. I'm going to read it here in just a few moments. But I want to take some time to uh, just continue to encourage you as we, we go through these uncertain times uh, together. Even though we are far apart, we are in this together. And the good news is that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is our hope. He is our strength. He is our peace during these times. And we uh, hope and pray that tonight as you hear, as you meditate upon these words, that God would continue to fill you with his strength, with his peace in the days to come. With that, I invite you to uh, where you're at to bow your heads as we begin our time together tonight in prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you so much that you are with us, that in the midst of difficult times in our lives, in our world, you are alive, you are reigning, you are on the throne, and Lord, you are a real present God in our lives. We thank you that you care about every single thing going on, and you care about what we're facing in our world today. And so we ask that you would continue to fill us with strength with peace, with hope in the days and the weeks to come. Help us to turn to you and to you alone for everything in our lives. We pray these things, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Again tonight, John chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. Six days before the Passover, Jesus therefore came to Bethany where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So they gave a dinner for him there. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those reclining with him at table. Mary therefore took a pound of expensive ointment made from pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume, but Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, he who was about to betray him, said, Why was this ointment not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. And having charge of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone, so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. For the poor you always have with you, but you do not always have me. Again, this will serve as the uh, focus of our, our time together this evening. There was a limited amount of time. Jesus had said to the people present with him, the poor you will always have with me. The, the poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. Jesus was pointing them to the fact that there was only a short amount of time left. He was getting ready to head to Jerusalem to go to the cross, to suffer and die for the sins of the whole world, and then rise victoriously on Easter Sunday morning. There was a short, limited amount of time, only about a week away. And Mary and Martha and Lazarus, who had spent time with Jesus throughout his earthly ministry, who had Uh, walked with him and listened to him and invited him into their home, knew these things about Jesus. And tonight, as we look at this text from John chapter 12, uh, we want to take just a few moments to think and ponder what John tells us about each of these three characters, Mary and Martha and Lazarus. Tonight, we start with Mary. And Mary takes some ointment, some perfume, and she uses it to anoint Jesus in in preparation for his death. Martha, uh, Mary takes this ointment that was worth 300 denarii, basically worth a full year's wages, and uses it as an act of worship to Jesus. If we're honest with ourselves, we might have responded like Judas. This could have been used for all kinds of other things. 
And yet, Jesus says it was used to worship him. Can you imagine someone today taking a full year's wages and giving it to the church? We might think it's crazy. And yet they do it willingly. This was a, a, an act of worship. It was a sacrificial act of worship. Imagine the money that Mary and Martha and Lazarus could have done with that money. Imagine they could have been a lot more comfortable in their living had they used the money that was used for this perfume if they had spent it or saved it for themselves. They could have been a lot more comfortable in life. But that's not what Mary wanted. She wanted to use this as an opportunity to worship her Savior, to worship her Lord. And that's what she did. How about us? How far are we willing to go to worship the Lord? Are we willing to be sacrificial in returning to the Lord what He's given to us? Or are we willing only to do so as long as we're comfortable? How far are we willing to go? And the other question for us to think about tonight when it comes to Mary is, how often are we like Judas? Criticizing the worship of other people. Mary knew there was a limited amount of time that was left to worship her, her Lord here on earth while He was still walking and talking and with them. She wasn't going to waste any time. She used the time and brought this gift to Jesus. Will we use what God has given to us to worship Him and encourage others as well in their worship with the Lord? We move on to, to think and ponder about Martha tonight. And tonight in our text from John chapter 12, we hear two words about Martha. It says that Martha served. There was this dinner that had been prepared for Jesus and his disciples, and Martha is there serving. Now in our text from John chapter 12 tonight, there, is, there are no words of rebuke like there were in the previous story, we, we hear about Mary and Martha. You might remember that story in, in the Gospel of Luke, and, and Jesus has come to visit Mary and Martha, and, and Mary is sitting at the feet of Jesus listening to him, and, and Martha is cooking and cleaning and doing the housework, and, and Martha is complaining, Lord, tell my sister to help me. And we remember that story, Jesus' words, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. This time, there's no words like that. Martha is serving her Lord. There was a limited amount of time for Martha to serve her Lord. We are reminded in Scripture over and over again that no one knows the day or the hour of Jesus' return. The reality is, in our lives today, we have a limited amount of time. We don't know when Jesus is going to return. We don't know when somebody's life may be over. We have a limited amount of time to serve our Lord here on this earth and to serve others. Will we do that? Are we ready to use our time and our talents and our treasures to serve our Lord, to be a blessing to other people? Or so often our response when our Lord calls to serve, and especially in His church, our response too often is, I don't have time. I'm too busy doing too many other things to serve the Lord. I've got to do this, and I've got to do that, and I've got these activities, and I'm too busy. We have a limited amount of time. Or our response is, I put in my time already. It's time for somebody else to do the work. 
That was not Martha's attitude. She knew she had a limited amount of time left to serve her Lord here on this earth. And that's what she was committed to. Serving her Lord. Serving her Savior. Serving Jesus. We don't know how much time we have. We know it's limited. How will we work? How will we serve our Lord and serve others in the limited amount of time we have left? Finally, we want to take a few moments to ponder and consider Lazarus tonight. And, and in this text, we actually don't hear any words from Lazarus. But we hear in our text that Lazarus is one of the people who is sitting and reclining and having this meal with Jesus and the disciples. Now on the just regular reading of this text, we might think, well, what's the big deal? Lazarus is just one of the people there. Well, you might remember if you were with us on Ash Wednesday what the story we read. And if you go back to John, the, the chapter before in John chapter 11, we see the story of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. You might remember the story, Lazarus is sick, he's near death. Mary and Martha send word to Jesus, Jesus, please come quickly, Lazarus is sick, he's about to die. And what does Jesus do? He waits four days to show up in Bethany. By that time, Lazarus is dead. And Jesus, is, he's met by Martha and Mary, tells them, roll the stone away. And Martha's like, well, Lord, he's already been decaying, there's going to be an odor. And yet, though, she follows and obeys her Lord. And Jesus speaks those powerful words of life. Lazarus, come forth, and here comes Lazarus. Though he had been dead, the words of life spoken by Jesus bring him back to life. And he walks out, and he's alive. Lazarus simply being there at that meal with Jesus, with the disciples, with his two sisters, simply by being alive is a witness to the glory and the power of Christ. And the work of Christ in his life by raising him back from the dead. We have a limited amount of time to be a witness for Jesus Christ. And we can witness in, in different ways. Number one, we can witness by our words, by telling people the greatest news in all the world, the good news of Jesus Christ, that He came to this world, born as a baby in Bethlehem, grew up and lived a perfect life, and then went to a cross and suffered and died for the sins of the whole world, and then rose victoriously on the third day. We can share with people the good news that there is hope and peace and forgiveness and life found in Jesus. We witness to our friends and our family and our loved ones and others by what we say and by telling them the good news. But also in our lives, by the way we live our lives, we can be a witness to the power and the might and the glory of of Christ in our lives. Jesus said, by this all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. By the way we show love and care and compassion to one another, we show ourselves to be Christ's disciples and people see Christ in us. We have a limited amount of time to share this good news. With those around us. Brothers and sisters, in the midst of, of times that are uncertain, in the midst of what we are facing in our world today, it is a reminder for us that we don't know what tomorrow will bring. 
It is a reminder for us that we do have a limited amount of time here on this earth. But we do know the one who has the hope for us, for everyone. It is Jesus Christ. In our limited amount of time, may we continue to be people who worship our Savior. May we be people who are working for His kingdom And may we be witnesses of Christ in our words, in our actions. We have a limited amount of time. How will we use it? Once again, I invite you to bow your heads and join me in prayer. Father God, we thank you for your love and your faithfulness to us. Lord, you are an amazing, awesome God who just loves us, who cares for us. And Lord, tonight, again, we continue to look to you for our strength, for our hope, for our peace. Lord, we pray that as we have been reminded in these days, that we never know what tomorrow will bring. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to bring the good news of hope and peace of Christ to others. And we ask that your Holy Spirit would help us to do that. To share Christ with others. That that we would be working for your kingdom. Lord God, we pray for all those who are are living in fear right now. We ask that by the power of the Spirit, the promises of Your Word, the promises of Your presence, the promise that we can never be separated from Your love would ring true in their lives. That for all of us, we would cast all our anxiety on You because You care for us. And help us always to cling to the truth, Jesus, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. May we cling to that now, not only in uncertain times, but each and every day of our lives. We thank you, Lord, for this time in your word. We thank you for the opportunity to just be with you knowing that you are with us. Lord Jesus, we just pray all these things in your name. Amen. Well, again, we thank you for uh, joining us here tonight. I want to remind you that we are going to be back here at 945 on Sunday to live stream our worship service. Please continue to check our Facebook page and our church's website for updates uh, regarding uh, what is going on with the COVID-19. We will continue to keep you updated and continue to bring God's word to you in many different platforms. Uh, If you have any questions or concerns or if there's any way that I can be praying for you, definitely call or text or email me and I'll be glad to do that. God's blessings and may we continue to rest in our real present God who is with us in good and bad and who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God's blessings to you.